I have been noticing, as you guys have been finishing up these designs, a lot of you are getting a lot of layers. This is a good thing to have layers, okay? And it's also not a bad thing to have a lot of layers. But sometimes, as you can kind of see over here, if you look at my layers palette, it gets a little confusing because you do get a lot of, of layers. Um, and controlling them all can be kind of difficult. So, especially, I mean, I don't even know how many I have here, but I have a lot because you should have a layer for every single object. If you've got a lot of objects, you're going to have a lot of layers. There's a technique thing in Photoshop called groups that you can do with layers, and it is so easy if you want to just put things together so you can control them. You can make a group and add objects to a group in basically two ways. The first way is you can take them all and you can highlight them. So I'm going to take the first shape, go all the way down to the bottom circle. Let's just say I want all these circles together. I'm going to hold the shift key down and click on the last one. Okay, so let me do that again for you. Click on the first one, find the bottom one, hold the shift key down, and boom, it selects everything. If there are certain ones you don't want in, you can hold the option key down, or not the option, the command key, my fault, sorry, the command key, and you can deselect individual ones. So the shift key, obviously, when you click on one and then you go to the bottom and you click on the next the shift key, it selects everything in between. If you use the option or the command key, keep saying option, it will actually allow you to select or deselect individual layers. So that's a really key part. Once we've got all the layers that we want highlighted, all we have to do is go over here to this menu, drop down, and there it says new group and new group from layers. If I choose new group, it's just going to make a group that's empty. However, if I choose new group from layers, okay, it's going to make a group, and we'll just call this circles, okay. Click OK. And now you notice I have a folder in here. See that? And if I click the little triangle to open up the folder, I have all of my shapes are now inside that group. Now you can drag groups out of, a, or drag layers out of a group too. So if I just drag this up, it's out of the group. Drag it back in, put, your, put the hand right on the word, and now it drags it back into the group, and we're good to go. You can also click the, um, the eyeball icon to turn off whole groups as well, which is rather handy. Okay? Or you can open up the group and you can turn on or off individual items, alter their colors, whatever. It doesn't affect the functionality of the, of the layer itself. The layer itself will work perfectly fine. What it does is it gives you a way of, number one, cleaning up the layer's palette. Number two, all, when the group is closed like this, all these layers will work together. So if I grab the Move tool and I start moving them, you see they all will start moving together. That is, again, very handy. If, however, I only want to move one, I just open up the group, I find the one I want to move, and now I can move that individual object layer, that layer, very easily. Okay? The other way to make a group is to just go <coughs> here and go new group which makes an empty group I'm just okay or let's just delete the group I can go down here to the bottom of the palette go away and there's a folder icon right there and it says create a new group See, create a new group just like that so I can then click that button and now I get a new group here double click and call it rectangles and now it's empty. I just click and drag all of those in there. Now notice something just happened. What just happened? I'll redo it for you. So I just went undo. Now I'm going to redo the add to, uh, add to group. What just happened? What's changed? What? The order, the purple rectangles are now above the yellow circles. So be careful, the order of the groups also changes the order of the layers. 
So now I can drag this back underneath and now I'm back to my original uh, setup. You just have to be careful of that. <clears throat> the other thing that you want to be careful about is you can also accidentally put groups inside groups. Okay? So you do want to be careful of that. I'll just get this out by dragging it all the way up here and bringing it outside the group and now I've got groups within groups. You can have untold number of groups within groups within groups within groups within groups. I recommend you don't do that. You don't go too far because if you do, what will end up happening is you're going to just start losing things. That makes sense. Okay, if you have too many groups, uh, too many, especially groups inside groups, you will start to lose things. So I think it's better that you don't do that. Um, <clears throat> the other nice thing is you can also control opacity with the group. So I can just take the whole group and I can make it see-through. Okay, so there are other things that you can do with a group you know, as a whole, but um, you know, you'll, you can play with them, but it also, it keeps you organized. It keeps you organized, allows you to move things as, as a group, allows you to kind of declutter up the layers palette here, and it, you know, allows you to just be a little bit more organized so that your images or your layers palette's not such a mess, and it can make it a lot easier to control different items. So all these circles are now together, and if I want to move them, I can move them all together. If I want to move them individually, I just open the group. So it does, it makes it a lot easier. Does that make sense? I mean, it's pretty, pretty simple. Groups? All right, we like groups. They're good. 